Welcome, wacky teacherpreneur frenzies. I am happy to have you here today. I'm with my buddy Amanda, and we are going to do an exciting episode today on a book that I read called 12 Months to 1 Million. Please stick around to the end because we're going to be talking about how we're going to apply the ideas from this book to our own businesses. Stay tuned. All right, Jess. So tell us, tell me, I want to know how to make a million dollars in a year. I'm desperate. I want to know how to do it in my business. I don't want to have to go deep sea diving for treasure. Like my background is uh, revealing. Watch YouTube. Watch us on YouTube. It's hilarious. We have these weird backgrounds and I look exhausted. It's the morning. I always I look too. so like my eyes look, I don't know. They look like swollen or something. <laughs> When you, when you messaged me this morning, I was still in bed. I had just woken up. I was like, oh yeah. So I went to, I went to go see the Titanic last night, the 25 year 3d edition. And I hadn't watched it in over 10 years. So I have the Titanic behind me. And then we, we want something to go with the Titanic, but also stay with the theme of making millions. So Amanda is under the sea with a box of treasure. Yeah. <laughs> look at us, look at us on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. Well, okay, but also this this episode is part of a series of episodes about productivity. And I do feel like being as efficient and as possible on our way to meeting our financial goals is definitely falls under the topic of productivity. So how can I make more money quicker, like in a productive way? <laughs> tell us, yeah, Jeff, tell us about this book. Yeah. So I don't know where I found this book or how I found this book, but every time someone recommends a book, like in a business group, I save it to my phone and I put it on my audible wish list. And so this one just sort of struck a chord because it's called 12 months to 1 million. The author's name is Ryan Daniel Moran, M-O-R-A-N. <laughs> I didn't want you to think I was calling him anything. No. Um, <laughs> anyway, he is a, he's a successful entrepreneur and I believe he owns a website and I think it's called capitalism.com. So like a lot of people are against capitalism right now. I'm like, they might not like this, but capitalism is the way we become millionaires rather quickly in the United States. So anyway, I'm not going to go into any politics, but <laughs> this is a really fun book. So let me tell you the premise of the book. Let me, let me tell you like, you know, you're going to want to know, well, how do I make a million dollars in 12 months? So the book is about developing not a product, but a product line for an ideal customer. And if you take any business course, the first thing they tell you, you got to know your, your ICA, your ideal customer avatar. Who are you making products for and who are you trying to sell for? You should know everything about that person, what their pain points are, what their hobbies and interests are, what their personality is like, because that's who you're selling to. So you need, you're not selling into the vast space, you're selling into the world, right? Amanda? I don't know. I've I've heard that knowing their hobbies isn't as important as knowing what their their the pain that they're experiencing and how to solve that pain. Like how what how your product helps resolve that issue or that problem that they're having. I've I've learned that it's not necessarily as important as learning like about their personality and their birthday and their age. And if they well, go to I'll tell you what, I think it is important because a lot of the social media posts that you put out, you know, if you want them to be relatable to these people, then, I mean, because they're not necessarily, you're not necessarily going to find someone that matches you and your personality. And they were even, I think they were even kind of saying this in the book is that entrepreneurs tend to you know, you just think you're going to attract someone just like you. And so you put out things you think are funny and that you find amusing. But if that doesn't match the personality type of your ICA, they're not going to buy your stuff. And I have seen this in the teacher entrepreneur world. One example I've seen is there is a certain type of teacher that loves the show Friends. They are obsessed with the show Friends. They've seen every episode. They know all the characters. And so what I've noticed is that I know certain entrepreneurs have been marketing to people that watch Friends 
by making like silly memes and stuff that's going to just draw in people for fun. And then it turns out that they also want their products. That's my argument against that that theory. But we can we can have that argument a different day. We want to jump in to how to make a million dollars in in a year. Amanda, do you want to know how to make a million dollars in a year? I do. And I, I guess I see your point, but I also think that like, I don't know, social media, I just actually wa- listen to a really, really awesome podcast of from my favorite, favorite entrepreneur, online entrepreneur. I bet you could guess who. Mary V. No, Pat Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, he Pat had, whoopsies. He had an episode about, um, social media and um how to use the sneak attack method for podcast growth and it was actually done by a woman named Jillian who works for him and it was good it was a really good episode because it was all about um when you post on social media you should not be like trying to get people to go off the the platform it should be like be a standalone post um, that's valuable in and of itself. Um, but I think like when you're trying to, and she also mentioned like reels, for example, like why do people watch reels or why do people watch, um, TikTok or whatever it's for pure entertainment value. And so you don't want to attract people who are just like, oh, I'm here. Cause I make me laugh because they're not less likely to buy your product. You want to attract people. I completely disagree because I've been watching TikTokers. They're geniuses. 90% of what they put out is like, make me laugh. And then they insert a product in the midst of all those make me laugh videos. And they are making bank. Like I've watched this one woman who does this silly dance in front of her husband. And then he gets mad every time she does the dance. 90% of her videos are this dance. Their logo for their business is her doing the dance in front of her husband. And he gets so mad at her. Well, they're both in the military and she has to do a military hairdo every day, right? So one out of 10 videos, she invented her own hair gel to do her military uh, hairdo. It has nothing to do with the dance. It has nothing to do with the 90% of content she puts out. And I'm telling you, I have watched her go from selling like 20 jars of this hair gel to her whole living room and house being full of the hair gel. She has so many orders from people who like the silly dance. So I have been watching entrepreneurs utilize their audience to sell them the products. Very possible. Just with silly videos. Oh, yeah. The, this All this lady does, 90% of her videos are doing a silly dance and tricking her husband. And But they are growing a business. She is growing a multi-million dollar hair product business right now from her house, doing silly videos in front of her husband. And they're both in the military. You know, you could tell they live in, a, in military housing. And I'm telling you, she is going to be a millionaire by next year. And do you think her ICA, they're like all people who, women who are also in the military? No, I think that the approach of these people being funny are just anyone that has like a sense of humor like they do. Like I don't actually LOL at their videos. It's not really for me, but I still watch them because they're weird, right? So I think it, I think they're, I think one one form of marketing right now is throwing out a giant net, you know, and if you throw out a net, she has millions of people watching her out of those 6 million people, she's going to find her ideal customer. And for her, it doesn't necessarily matter so much. And I mean, like a lot of different types of people use hair gel, not just people in the military, but hers is kind of, she has military like camouflage on the outside of the box and it's a part of her shtick, but she's getting all different types of people to buy the hair gel. So I don't even know if she has an ICA. I think it's just a new method that only TikTok has invented. And I don't think that mark these big marketing entrepreneurs are aware of like what's going on. Like the people that are already multimillionaires and they've been doing like a b and c for years like um pat flynn 
I don't know if he's aware of like this new marketing strategy. Oh, he, he, like... did, he did 30 days of TikTok. Okay. He actually had an episode about why he's not doing TikTok anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And it's really interesting, but yeah, no, I think um, you're onto something, but tell us more. About yeah. We're TikTok. getting way off track. Well, I am I mean, so sorry to the listeners. The ICA thing, like it's just hard because I feel like we are our own ICA, but I have the people who buy from me are actually not me. You're right. They're not like me. They actually, most of the people in my audience have been teaching a lot longer than I have. And I'm always shocked at like how experienced they are. Like, why are you following me? I've only been teaching for 14 years. And these teachers have been teaching for 30, 40 years. And they're older yeah. women. And I'm yeah. not quite sure what, <laughs> why they, why they like me so much. But um, anyways, yeah, I think they're like people who really like I don't know, like authenticity or something. I'm not sure what, because that's what a lot of people have said about me that they love how my energy and my authenticity. That's great. Maybe we should cut this episode and just make this our ICA episode. Because <laughs> I feel like it's going to go into like a 30 minute spiel now but how much about something the, new. I know, but how much of the, um, yeah, let's just make this an ICA episode. And then how we'll do a new episode on the book. Okay. Well, well, no, 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 no. Let's just make this part one of the book. Hmm? Okay. But I mean, the book, the the ideas in the book are going to take a long time to discuss. And well, I but, feel like we've already gone into like 10 minutes of the I time. See it. But they, the book talks about ICA and how important that is at the beginning. It's so minimal in the book. Okay. I think we just went off these, I made a statement and you kind of disagreed with it. And then we went off the rails, you know? So I think maybe we should just finish our ICA talk and then come back and do the book. Okay. Well, then we need a new introduction and we have to cut out all of this. <laughs> or maybe okay. we'll just keep it and who cares? Okay. Let's just keep it. Should I just talk about the book now? This no. is going to be a 40, this is for sure going to be a 40 minute episode though. I'm just letting you know. No, let's, you okay have this one, let's have this one be the ICA one. Okay. So skip the book then. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to be a lot. And I'm just like, I'm kind of panicked for time because I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's keep debating this. Okay. Like how important who, well, who is your ICA? I've never been able to figure it out. And I think that's why I'm not very yeah. successful. Like, well, I, I think like at first I kind of knew and then like, I don't know. The thing is, I've never really built an authentic business away from social media and social media is constantly changing. So my ICA when I first started was a lot different because the social media platforms have changed because I use Periscope and then I use Blab. And then I was actually getting kind of big on Twitter and doing a lot of funny stuff on Twitter. And then I'm on Instagram stories and then I did IGTV and I just, my, like my platform keeps changing, which is really why I wish I would have invested all of my time and effort into a website because my website never would have changed, but I've invested all of my time and energy into different forms of social media. So, and I think it just changes as fast as social media changes. And I think that's kind of the problem with me. Well, and also like, I don't necessarily think you need to know your ICA if you're teaching, you're selling stuff on teachers pay teachers, like how important yeah. do you think it is for, well, your ICA are teachers, right? They're probably going to be female teachers because like 90% of teachers are. Well, and also I think the ICA, I mean, I bought a lot of stuff on teachers pay teachers last year and I was really thinking, um, because I was teaching ancient civilizations um, and sixth grade uh, core. And part of that is teaching history, history, ancient civilizations. And I feel very um, unequipped to do that. And, and the textbook, I'm not like a, a huge on textbook teaching. So I, because it can get boring. And so I got on teachers pay teachers 
looking for kind of fun ways to teach ancient civilizations. And I, I probably spent like $300 um, in this one woman's store because <laughs> she made all sorts of digital like slideshows and like interactive. She had this interactive um, journal kind of thing, interactive notebook using Google to uh for an entire civilization so and she had them for every civilization so talking about product lines right so i bought her first one i should probably find out her name and shout her out here because she's amazing her stuff is great so she has the interactive notebook and then she also has the slideshows to go with it so you're using the slideshows to teach and then the kids kind of have to fill out the interactive notebook as you go. And so once you buy one civilization, then you're like, oh, I need the slideshow. Let me go buy that now. Oh, we're done with this unit. Oh, I better go get the next civilization. So, I mean, to me, like the ICA of a teacher on Teachers Pay Teachers is someone who's kind of inexperienced teaching that topic. And they need like really quick, easy to use lessons and like slideshows and th th things to make uh teaching more engaging I, that's always why I go to teachers pay teachers you know yeah and and when we do our next episode and talk about the 12 months to a million dollar book they actually do they kind of say that they're like when you're thinking of your ideal customer you have to think of all the things they're going to need in one year yeah to buy in that category like what is everything and so the, the people that wrote that book, they started with like a yoga mat. So they're like, when you're starting yoga, the first thing you do is buy a yoga mat. But what's the next product you buy? What do people buy after the yoga mat? And I think that really resonated with me with Teachers Pay Teachers. Like say you are teaching ancient civilizations. What is the first thing you're thinking that you need to start that class with? And then what would be the next the next thing. And well, that's really how you should build your product lines, right? You should build your product lines revolving around a year of what a teacher needs yeah. instead of, oh, this sounds cool. This sounds cool. Or I'm just going to do all these standards because, you know, depending on what you're selling, it might not be based on standards. It might be based on more activities or the pain points of the teachers through the year. Yeah. So like with me, it was like early man and then Mesopotamia. Right. And then I don't know what was next after that India or something, ancient India, um, the Indus river Valley civilization. Right. So it was based on civilizations. Um, so I guess like teachers who go on teachers be teachers. I mean, even though I have a lot of experience, I'm, you know, I've been teaching for 14 years. It might be a teacher who's pretty experienced. It doesn't have to be a new teacher, but like maybe they're teaching a new subject, you know, or they switch grade levels or something like that. So I don't know. And I think Teachers Pay Teachers is one of those places where people kind of go when they're desperate, you know, like they go, I'm still talking about the ICA um, and thinking about what kinds of teachers visit Teachers Pay Teachers. But like for us, we've kind of branched off from Teachers Pay Teachers and we're trying to get to know the ICAs and the people, you listener right now, the person who is listening to this podcast right now, who are they? You know, what are their problems and how could we help solve them? And like, we don't really know who's listening. I mean, we know people are listening because we see our statistics. And actually, I've been on a coaching call with someone who listens and really loves our podcast. And this person loves you, Jess, specifically. <laughs> She's always talking about the things, the things that you say. Thank um, you, whoever you yeah, are. Yeah, no, and, she, and I'm like, yeah, no, I love that that idea too that, um but she's awesome, you know, and she, she's she been a, a teacher for a long time. She's been on Teachers Pay Teachers a f just a few years, I think, but she's finding a lot of success on Teachers Pay Teachers and she wants to keep growing and she has her own website. She even has her own store. So she's pretty 
she's pretty experienced. And I know that you have friends that listen, right? And they're all pretty experienced. And I feel like they're coming to our podcast just for camaraderie, maybe. I don't know. But how else could we learn about our ICA? Does this book talk about this? Like, what things could we do to find out more about the people who are listening to our podcast and what kinds of things they're interested in buying from us? Well, no, it doesn't really talk about how to do (laughs) that. I mean, it's about how to make a million dollars in 12 months quickly, right? So, I mean, they're not really going off into that. Um, I mean, in a way it does. In a way it does. The main idea from the book is there is no niche too small for your product. So like whatever your product is, like say I wanted to sell, you know, something silly off of my hat or my desk here, my hat. I was looking at a hat. So I have like an address stamp, right? Oh, I probably had my whole address in it. No, I could You need to edit that out if it comes okay. up. But anyway, here's an address stamp. Stamp. Now, what could I do to just market an address stamp to teachers and have teachers want the address stamp? Stamp Because everybody has a need for an a- address stamp if they have an address and they send out mail. So the idea behind the book is that no niche is too small. Even if you think it sounds silly, they're, you're guaranteed to find that that niche hasn't been served with that product in the way that they want yet. And so one example, they actually give this in the book is, um, is a uh, bulletproof coffee. Now bulletproof coffee started as a response to Starbucks because they felt like it was these guys who are conservatives, gun toting conservatives, and they were against Starbucks. They feel like Starbucks is too liberal. They feel like Starbucks markets to women and they don't like their liberal media messages, right? <laughs> they don't like Starbucks and the liberals. They're against them. So, and I've actually heard of Bulletproof Coffee. I had no idea that they started on the premise of hating Starbucks and everything Starbucks stands for, I right? Didn't know either. Yeah, so they started and they're, they're trying to attract men who like to uh, carry guns, who think that Starbucks are is for sissies, right? That is their goal. Bulletproof coffee. And I had no idea. And so there was conservative men who carry guns. We're going to sell them coffee. Like, how bizarre is that? But they they have made a, a tens of, the business is worth tens of millions of dollars now because they just found this one group of people that weren't being properly served by the mass the big companies right and they went after them and now they're like one of the top selling coffee businesses okay can i tell you something can we talk about our ica right now because you know i i have some guesses about who's listening um and well we know a few of the people that are listening i mean they've told us that they they listen um but i'm just i'm just wondering what are they listening for and like, what do they need? And I actually, you know, have kind of been facing a crisis in my life. Um, I'm not going to go into details, but it's kind of like, I have to make some choices, some important life choices. Um, I'm just like at a crossroads right now. And I'm wondering and and I I talked to one of my friends and she was like, Amanda, you know, I think what you really need is a mastermind group. Like you need a group of people, like a support group, you know, like a group that you can get ideas and you can like collaborate and you can be heard and, and feel um, like you have camaraderie, I guess. Do you think that exists in the teacherpreneur world? Do you think that that's something that is people are desperate for? Oh, definitely. You're, you're and into masterminds. Yeah, I used to sell a business course for how to develop your own masterminds. I actually placed 65 teacher entrepreneurs into a mastermind group back in probably like um, 2016-ish. I, I sold a course and I, people signed up and then I would read what they were looking for and I would find them a match, a partner. 
and I would put them into small mastermind groups. And then I gave them an outline for how mastermind groups should be run just so they could get going with it. And, and it's something that? that definitely is needed. And there are a lot of things that, I mean, there are, there are a lot of things people don't know about coming with masterminds that we could probably do a different episode on. I don't want to go off on them, but there's a lot of local groups that have masterminds available. So like not only teacherpreneur groups, but local groups with small business people can also be highly impactful to your business because one in teacher entrepreneur groups, you're having a lot of competition with people a little bit and it can get a little it gets, I was in a mastermind for a year and a half, two years. And I watched like every person, a lot of the people in the mastermind, like zoomed ahead of me financially. And we had all started at the same level. And so that was like, it was hard, like watching other people in your, in your niche, zoom past you and, you know, go from making a couple thousand a month to like tens of thousands a month. Right. And it was difficult. And then they just zoom past the group and they didn't have a reason to be in the group anymore because we did bump them to the next level. Right. So that's why I do think that in certain circumstances that, I mean, while teacher entrepreneur groups are great, I think local small business masterminds can be more impactful because you're not in competition with people in your niche and you, you get to learn other business practices outside of the teaching world that are ap applicable, but people don't know about. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about like the people listening to this podcast, our ICA yeah. is, uh, is finding um, like camaraderie, something that is needed. And for me, yes. I think that it is. But I think you're right that it's hard if if the people in the group are all, you know, English teachers trying to sell their English curriculum, right? Because that's who I am. Um, and I've really been questioning that, you know, is that really what I want to sell? I mean, and that's a whole other episode too of like, you know, you've been doing something for years and years and years and years. How do you kind of start over or, Pivot. you know? Yeah. And that, oh God, we need to do an episode on There's that. There's so many books about pivoting now. It's so crazy. Oh, I know. Um, okay. So back to the ICA. Um, so it is important to know your customer. And I think that's kind of the gist of this episode that it is important, but we still haven't answered the question. Well, like, how do you get to know your customer? You know? And I think that's kind of the hard part. Um, and I guess it take, boils down to email, like email lists. If, and If you take the big courses, they just say to, you know, offer your ICA something they want. And then it could be like in the form of a quiz or and where you're getting information from them or just ask them. Like if you have a Facebook group or an email list or wherever you meet with your people, you probably meet with them somewhere, wherever you get to talk to them. Uh, ask them, like you could send them a Google form with questions, right? I've done that a million times. You know what I always find out about my ICA? Like I did it once. I offered like a $50 Starbucks card, gift card, and for them to answer these questions. And I was really hoping I could zoom in on who that person is. And every single question I asked had an equal number of answers, <laughs> So one, one question I asked is what grade do you teach? I was thinking that I had the majority of third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers following me. I was wrong. I have teachers from pre-K to college following me all in equal chunks. So my like grade level isn't an issue with my ICA so much, which is difficult when creating products because they're only going to appeal to a very tiny sliver of my audience. And then I just found out a lot of weird stuff. Like I, I thought I was going to get definitive answers from it, but I didn't. I think that could just be me. It really depends on what kind of content you're putting out. Like I was at the time I did that, I was putting out content about the seven habits and the, the seven habits of highly effective people and teenagers and kids. And a lot of schools like push that um, ID ideology on people. So I, and I realized that in talking about that so much, I was probably getting people from all walks of life 
because my ICA in that situation were people whose schools were making them do the seven habits, right? And I, I do think that that could be a part of it. That could be a part of it. But just setting out a form, at least I found out, I found out that I don't really have like a very set ICA to market to that it needs to be like the content I put out needs to be a little more general and a little more broad. That's what I found from all my surveys. And I did send out one of those people a $50 Starbucks gift card to collect all the data and I still have it. So, I mean, you could even a $5 Starbucks gift card, people will answer your survey and they'll, they'll answer your questions for you. Yeah, it's just still overwhelming. I feel like it's like when you're teaching and you assess students writing skills and then you get all this data back and it's like, oh, what do I do with this now? <laughs> you know, like you know what we should do? Oh my gosh. You know what? We do have an email list for wacky teacherpreneurs, right? We have an email yeah. list. We should send our email list out a survey and see if we can find out some stuff about them. Guess what? We already did. Oh. Let's we send them did. another survey. Okay. Well, we, have we asked them things like, how long have they been in business? Did we ask that question? I don't remember, but people See? did fill it out. They're working. That could be something we find out, right? Like those are some of our burning questions are like, are these people following us? Are they new to business and they need all the first beginning steps to it? Are they more seasoned? Where are they on their business journey? I mean, you could just send your audience one question to find out. And I do this with whimsical crafties. I'll make two products and I'll just put them out like two pictures and I'll be like, which one's better. And then that tells me which one they want to buy. Right. Like which yeah. one should I put more, more effort into selling? So sometimes you think it has to be complicated, but sometimes it can be just as simple as pick A or B. Yeah. And then you find out more. You're like, oh, okay. And you're just kind of cataloging that. Or if you're really smart, like Amanda, you'd probably make a spreadsheet with the data. <laughs> I do. I mean, or have a notebook, stuff. right? Yeah. Okay. Let's wrap the ICA part one of this book episode up. Um, we'll be toodles. back. I'm doing my toodle fingers. Okay. Toodles.